Our next story, Texas Southern University canceling Senator John Cornyn's uh, commencement speech. This after some liberal students complained. Joining us now, Bill Bennett, former U.S. Secretary of Education. Uh, Bill, is this uh, another example of the left shutting down free speech on college campuses? Sure it is. Uh, it's been going on for a while. Uh, this happened to me way back in the 80s when I was Secretary of Education. I had my had people turn their back on me. I was canceled from some universities, like the very liberal University of Wyoming, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> so yeah, this has been go this has been going on for some uh, for some time, and it's a shame because these students ought to hear another point of view. If the college's view is that students are in need of education. How about you get them outside the box, the ideological box that they're in? Um, John Cornyn, I mean, you know, a moderate conservative from Texas, former Supreme Court justice uh, in Texas, uh, could be very enlightening speaker. Betsy DeVos has a lot to say, but the students come and they protest, and that is that. It's a shame. I, we're gonna, Charles, I think in the end we're going to be left with three commencement speakers in America. Whoopi Goldberg, Senator Sanders, and Fareed Zakaria. And they're going to have to do all the universities. Maybe they'll have to do, do Skype or something like that. On the uh, Betsy DeVos yeah. one, you know, it was, there was an interesting backstory to it, though, uh, that I don't think a lot yeah. of people talked about. I didn't see anyone yeah. talk about it at all. On May 5th, uh, as the president was signing the spending omnibus, he talked about historically black colleges and their funding, federal funding or hate, not being constitutional per se. Uh, and, and within the black community, it was a tremendous amount of fear and anger, a lot of I told you so's. Uh, and over the, that weekend, the White House released the communique saying that the president, in, in fact, had unwavering support for HBCUs and that he signed, uh, reiterating that he signed an executive order pledging to strengthen the capacity of HBCUs. Is this one of these things too where the right cannot get a break no matter what, uh, and anything that's misconstrued is, le is, no is seized upon, and that becomes the narrative no matter what. No matter what, you're exactly right. A couple of backstories here. I'll tell you one from my personal experience. You probably don't know this, but uh, I applied to be the president of Fisk University, uh, <clears throat> which is a historically black college and university. I thought it would be good for the university. I thought I could bring a lot of Republican funds to the university. I never made it through the first round of the process. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the craziest candidate, it seems to me, uh, given my background, but uh, no way. Um, we would have taken the job, too, my wife and I. We were excited about it. The other backstory here, Charles, is that when the president of Bethune-Cookman, where Betsy DeVos went, invited Betsy, the Florida NAACP called for his resignation. Um, this is uh, extraordinary to me. He invites the Secretary of Education to speak, which is nothing but good for the university. Uh, and the NAACP guy in Florida calls for her uh, for his resignation. This was the guy, Charles, who during the commencement, when the booing was going on, grabbed the microphone and said, "If you keep this up, we will mail you your diplomas." Uh, that was more courage than was <laughs> right. shown at Middlebury College, right. I must say. Yeah, uh, and, and it is those uh, those en entities like the NAACP and some of the olders, to me, Bill, that need to continue to stoke an element of fear and anger to justify their own existence because they refuse to morph into a more modern organization that reflects today's society, not 1950. Uh, you're right, and the question is whether that fear and anger and animosity is good for the students who you are supposedly representing. Is it better or worse for the students at Texas Southern to have a good relationship with John Cornyn? You know, if he had come and given that commencement address a year later down the road, a couple of students from Texas Southern you know, go to Washington, right. visit with Cornyn. He'll recall with delight his, his visit there. Uh, you know, who's it for here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not for the students. Their yeah. long-run interest would be to listen to him and welcome him. I do want to say on a personal note before I let you go, uh, when my son was in high school, I had him read uh, at least three times a week passages out of uh, the Book of Men. I, I thought it was an extraordinary book, and I really appreciate you putting it together. I'm telling you, it was fascinating, and uh, he learned a lot, and I learned probably more. Thank you very much for that, and thank you for coming you're, on this morning. You're very welcome, and I thank you for that more than you know. All thank right, you. see you soon. <laughs>